Hey hey, welcome back to the channel, it's awesome that you're tuning in. So in this video we're going to take a close look at the GameStick controller gamepad Y6 from Pow Kitty. Pow Kitty is a brand that releases all kinds of stuff including handhelds and other weird stuff. But what are we going to get? So this is actually just an HDMI stick that contains everything that you're going to need. Yep, remove the cap, you're going to plug it in and you have actually like a retro game system. <laughs> the first thing you need to take consideration, these things are very thick, so it doesn't fit every single P. <laughs> Let's put it this way, it will not fit or it will fit and cover up and port next to it. That's something you need to take consideration. Some of the boxes includes not only USB dongle for the controllers, but also we're going to get ourselves the necessary extension cord like this one. So that is super convenient because this is not very common. In here we're going to get ourselves the micro USB cable for connecting because this thing is 5 volt. Then we do have like the toilet paper manual deluxe that gives you an explanation how everything works and how it will look. So if you have any questions you can always check that manual. Some of the things that will happen in when the system, yeah, but let's put it this way, the manuals are most of the time incomplete. This kit comes with the two white color controllers. That's quite rare because normally we're going to get black version, always the black version. But the first thing we need to do is smelly test. Hmm. They smell like chemical plastic, but not the extreme burnt chemical plastic that we have seen before. It is absolutely like a gamble when it comes to these things. The controllers, especially the A, B and X, Y don't feel that bad. And the same goes for D-pad and the analog sticks. The overall quality is not bad at all. What you're going to get is a battery compartment that's also very difficult to open up. We need two AAA batteries and at the bottom we're going to get ourselves the on and off switch. If you want to plug this thing in, the USB dongle needs to go in the back over here. And we're going to get ourselves one USB dongle and two controllers. That's a special configuration what I've seen many times before when it comes to Pandora's boxes. In here we're finding the SD card. We do have different kind of sizes. Let's take a close look what kind of brand. There is no brand, it just says game system 128 gigabyte. I will say make a backup of this thing because it's highly possible that when you're going to not back up it, you're going to be having a problem because these things are getting corrupted fairly easy because they're just very cheap cards. Absolutely cheap to the cheap and very slow. But what do we need to do for connecting it? And I think it's very cool. We just need to plug in the USB in the USB port of the television. If you don't have this, use a 5 volt, 3 amp or a very good normal charger. Next thing, plug this thing in the micro USB in the port over here. So it's getting some juice and then connecting this in the television. It does have some room, but I think it's be connected and it seems to be working just like that. Otherwise, we're going to use the extension cord. And with my case, it's just where I'm going to power on the television. We're going to get the logo of the 3D game stick. After that, we're going to get ourselves a short intro that you, by the way, can't not skip and another loading screen. It'll take up a couple of minutes and it would load up your product automatically. So what you're going to get is just instantly loading into the menu itself. And what I really like about it, that we do have like a very fast, like friend, user friendly menu. And that's what you're going to get with these sticks. It's just a plug and play device. What can we play? PlayStation Arcade, Super Famicom Game Advance, Mega Drive, Famicom Game Boy Color, Neo Geo Pocket, Game Gear, Mega Drive 32X. There is so much stuff on here. I have seen bigger collections, but I think for the general public, I think most people will find games that they will really like. Another thing I just find absolutely great is that we're going to even having some veteran games on here. But I think the biggest, coolest thing you just see like it went something wrong over there that the menu itself works super fast and that is something i don't see every single time when it comes to the game box or game stick when pressing select and start we're only having the option to check out the controller settings over here and yeah that's it it's very very limited i'm just going to be honest with you it's even limited than i've seen with different dongles like the gt10 language can be switched over here with a couple of languages not a lot of them and you can quit the system or restart it that's the only thing that we can do over here another weird choice that when you go into the game itself pressing select and start this is the only thing that we're going to get we're just going to get ourselves like a quick load quick save and that's it there is nothing we can do when it comes to swapping emulators or in this case if you go into ruse what is that i think they mean resume there is even like a weird filter over it 
I don't like it at all, but there is nothing you can do about it, including that special ratio. So especially when it comes to the old school Game Boy Game Gear game, man, they look super stretched out. They slapped a weird filter over it to little, little, little. Let's put it this way: that it looks slightly better than your pixelated games. So one of the cool additions is the Sega 32X. It's a very small library of games that is on there, but it's cool that they added this. And also here I do have the feeling that they have the same kind of weird filter over it. No weird sound delays whatsoever. Let's move on to the Sega Moss system just to see what actually how good it runs. And also here we're having the weird filter over it. It's kind of funny when I'm looking at it. I'm getting really used to it. But so far, no way stuff going on over here. When you're going to look into a Game Boy, it's going to be stretched to a crazy, crazy amount. So it's quite unfortunate in my opinion. I personally really prefer to have a bezel over here. But beside that, it seems to be running just fine. I just wanted to check out some PlayStation Portable. What's kind of funny is when you're pressing select to start, nothing happens. We're pressing select and start at the same time. Yeah, we're not going to sh we're not going to see the freaking PPSSV emulator options. That's unfortunate because we cannot like mess around with it to get a little bit better performance. We do see some glitching already going on. And PlayStation Portable most of the time needs way more power to get some great performance. And with those sticks, it's fun they're putting it on here. Omega. Round one. <laughs> and this is not the performance that you want to see. At this point it's still playable, but it is just going to be a mixed performance with certain games. But what is kind of interesting, I just wanted to show you, we do have the option to change out the contr controls. When you're pressing this, we go into the PPSSP, so, I mean PPSSPP emulator, ah, that name, oh. The save function, oh man, there we go. It's quite interesting how they reconfigured everything. Let's move on to Sega Dreamcast with some Battle Life 2 testing because I'm really curious how this is actually going to be running. PlayStation Portable wasn't great, but it was playable. Minor hiccups. Now we're going to push the stick to the limit. I've seen my share of, like, say, shit emulation, but this is not bad at all. And if it can run Dead Alive 2, it can run most of the games. Minor dips here and there, but in my opinion, it's still playable. Next test is going to be a Thomas Wave, and I can already hear that it struggles big time. That's what we're going to get with these low power devices. They should like remove these things. Let's be honest, this is not the way how you want to play a game like that. It's absolutely great game. For me, it's like the next level for Metal Slug. But it stutters even in the beginning. So what I wanted to do is just check out some Nintendo DS and the reason why because I have noticed there was some mixed performance when it comes to certain game sticks. So the first thing I've noticed that the overall performance is quite good. Another cool thing is we can enter the stylus mode and pressing the left joystick I can just even switch between the screens if I want to. I think that's pretty damn cool. Stuff that we didn't have with some previous models. Pressing select start will bring me automatically back to the main menu, so there is no extra menu for a quick load of quick save. So let's try some golden eye. I just wanted to see what's going on with this. N64 is a quite difficult piece of equipment to emulate on cheap stakes like this. So it's going to be absolutely a hit or miss with these games, especially when in N64. And you need to at least have like a quite expensive mini PC to get some good emulation. 
But again, it's going to be in hit or miss with these game sticks. Sometimes you do see some glitching. They're most of the time running on native resolution. You can already hear that it is just like having a lot of problems emulating. You can see a lot of street, a lot of weird stuff going on in the background. But in my opinion, this is not really playable. I cannot really enjoy this old school game. So one of the things I just wanted to check out when it comes to PlayStation 1 is the audio. Because this is a general problem that is skipping to add the audio files to a video game to save memory and to add more stuff or have the option at least to add more stuff. But without the music, there is no sale to the game. But the overall experience when it comes to the PlayStation 1, we can finally run it without any problem besides the audio problem on a game stick like this. And I think that is pretty damn cool. It's still on native resolution because these game sticks are not powerful enough to run them on upscaled resolutions. And for me, I think the latest game that you can actually play is Mortal Kombat. That's it. There is no shadow effect. I did notice it in my previous videos. And other people did talk about it. It's kind of weird that they didn't fix the issue. And there's no way of messing with emulators to get it to work perfectly. Also, there's a weird filter of it. You can just see it. What is kind of cool that they implemented a search function and the search function will give us the option to search our games super fast so far it also loads up the games very fast another thing i also find very cool that they give you a tiny icon at the back or letter saying dc or dreamcast so you can quickly find your game that you're looking for for what kind of platform but let's take a sneak peek in the inside I've seen a lot of game stakes in the last, I think, a couple of months I've doing these reviews. And one of the things I have also noticed that they're having different methods of like giving them some cooling. Particularly like the passive cooling is a very popular way. But what I do notice that there are two metal plates in here. A very thin one at the top, or yeah, at the, at the top, and a very thick one. And I can tell you, it doesn't transfer a lot of heat, but maybe enough to cool the chip down. So there is no active cooling whatsoever. They have some thermal pads in place. This thermal pad doesn't go anywhere, just at the back where the chip is. But let's remove this thermal pad. There's a different substance that we have seen before. The ones that are more kind of sticky. And yeah, of course you rip it apart. I just wanted to see what is basically behind the chip in here. So it's kind of weird, look like more like double-sided tape than actually going to be using normal thermal paste so i need to apply myself some thermal paste so what is interesting they are using the s905x2 it's a different chipset that we have seen in different models yeah but you can see like it's always a gamble when it comes to these things or what we're actually going to get it's kind of interesting to see also how it just evolves everything how great it is nowadays it's just a freaking tiny stick but what you're going to get is just a plug and play solution. The Powkitty Y6 is just one of those game sticks that you can just plug in your television and start playing. If you love messing around with Emmy Alec, the software itself, this is nothing for you. It comes with a lot of problems. Things I did like, for example, is the navigation menu. It's super easy to learn and it works also very fast. Thank you for watching, consider subscribing, hit that little bell, and it will be great to see you in the next video. Mm.